Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to blend multiple layers together inside of Photoshop to create some nice collaging artwork. One of the things that drew me to Photoshop in the first place was the ability to be able to get different photographs, blend them all together and create these seamless transitions between them. It's just so much fun and it's a really cool effect and I'm going to show you how to do it right now from different photos. It's really not that hard. So here we go. We're going to start for backdrop I got here and this is just kind of a, I wanted a kind of a newspaper punky kind of a feel and I'm going to do like a band uh, kind of a music artist composition here. So we've got a picture of her. She's going to be a drummer and we've also got her here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab this picture and I want to mix these two layers together. Now the way to do it is if you click and then you move up into the new one, into that tab, I'm still holding it down. Notice the new one is visible and you'll see that the cursor is showing white. And if I hold down the shift key and release, it'll drop that photograph right in the middle. Great. So now we're just going to push it over to the side a little bit. And in fact, I don't want it to change its position. So to do that, if I hold the shift key, that'll move it across perfectly horizontal. Now I'm going to push it right up to the edge there. And I want to smoothly kind of blend this into this backdrop. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a layer mask. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to click here to create a new layer mask. And we go down to the layer mask icon and notice that that layer now is selected. So I'm just going to click and you're going to see that this mask is applied. Now let's talk about layer masks for a second. Layer masks are really cool. What they do is they enable us to cut out parts of photographs or blend photographs smoothly without losing information. Say for example, if I got a picture and I took a pair of scissors to it, there's no way to kind of bring that back. Same thing as if you use the eraser tool. If you use the eraser tool on that layer and you change your mind later, you can't get it back. You have to bring the photo in and start all over again. However, if you use a layer mask, by default you notice it's white. And when it's white, it's invisible, it doesn't do anything. But if you begin to paint with black, on those areas that you paint in black will become invisible and you'll be able to see through. So it's like cutting a hole, but if you want to go back the other way, you can switch back to white paint and then it shows the layer again. So the way I kind of remember it is black will cut it out because think of a black hole. So it makes a hole in there. So let's have a look at how that works right now. So if I was to grab a brush and that's just the B for the brush key here, and I'm going to make sure that I'm using a soft edge brush. So take the hardness all the way down. Now, if I choose white and I paint, notice what's going to happen here. Nothing is going to happen. That's because the mask by default is white. If I hit the X key and now I choose black, notice I'm able to cut out those areas. But the cool thing about that is if I go back to black again, uh, sorry, if I go back to white again and I paint, notice I can bring it back. So it's completely non-destructive. Okay, the reason I showed you that is because if I use a gradient, I'm going to be able to create this seamless blend between the two layers. So let's do that right now. Let's grab the gradient tool. Make sure we're set to white and black and just hit the D key for default and that will reset those. Go up to the top. We want to make sure we're going the first option, which is foreground to background. We're going to select the linear gradient and then make sure that we're in normal blend mode and the opacity is all the way up to 100. Now, all we need to do is just click and drag across. And if we release, it's going to blend the layers. Now, if it looks weird like that, just go the other way. And notice what we can do. Now we can try it in different ways just by clicking and dragging because this is non-destructive. We can just keep trying until we find something that we like. So, you know, we could go out to here. I'm going to hold the shift key and go to there and create this kind of an interesting looking blend. All right, we're not finished yet. We've got more stuff that we can do. I'm going to add an additional picture and then I'm going to show you how to do a double gradient blend. But before I do that, Look at this photograph. See how it's nicely blending in. But maybe I don't want the newspaper showing in her face. So if I select the mask here and remember that white will show. So if we hit the brush tool and we've got a pretty large brush, maybe hit the left bracket key, make it a little smaller. Notice what happens as I paint in white. I can fine tune what we're doing there and show the areas that I want to show. So maybe a little bit more in there. 
and see how you can kind of customize that. So that's a nice way to be able to blend things in. Now I'm gonna add a third picture so I can show you even more things that you can do. Okay, so we're gonna grab one more picture here. Let's grab this one. And I'm just gonna hit the V key for the move. And we're gonna grab this one and drag it in. So click, hold, and just don't do anything yet. I still haven't released. Hold the shift key, now release, and it's gonna drop that in the middle. All right, so let's just drag this into position. Maybe we wanna put this in the corner. Now I'm gonna hit Control T or Command T for free transform. Holding down the shift key, I'm gonna drag this out a little bit to make it a little bigger. And we can kind of drop that in there. Now, we don't wanna just get rid of the white and just have it cut out. We wanna blend this together a little bit more smoothly. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna apply another mask. So let's do that, create that layer mask. Now we're gonna start from this side because we don't want that hard edge. So let's grab the gradient tool and we're just gonna click and drag. Hold down the shift to constrain it if you want. And if you go the wrong way, like I just did, go this way here. There we go. And so that looks pretty nice. Now we wanna do the top. Now here's a problem. If we click and drag here to create a gradient in the top, Notice this side is also gonna be back to the hard edge. So I'm gonna try this again. Let me hit the shift and go back here. And I wanna smooth blend at the top as well. So the way to do that is we change our gradient and we're just gonna go foreground to transparent, which is the second option. Hit the X key. So we're gonna be painting now from black to transparent. And if I hold down shift and drag it this way, notice now I can create a double gradient. Now, if I don't like that, I want to make it a little bit more subtle going all the way through there. I think that's kind of a nicer blend, so it's not just so abrupt. If you drag a further amount, you're going to get a smoother um, kind of a blend, a more gradual blend. If you drag it a short distance, you're going to get a very abrupt blend. So depending on how you want to work, you can use the gradient tool that way. All right, so now we want to kind of paint some things back in here around her face. So let me show you some tips here. If we hold down the shift key and click on this mask, it can hide the mask temporarily. Because what we want to do is we just want to select the white rather than having to paint it. Let's use the selection tools. In fact, let's use the magic wand. Most of the time I'm going to use the quick mask tool, but in this case, I'm going to use a magic wand for tolerance set to about 20. And then if I just click, notice what it does is selects those white areas. In fact, if I hold shift click, I can get those areas there too. Now notice there's some areas that we need to kind of touch up a little bit. And you know we could kind of do that. In fact, I'll show you how to do that. If we hit the Q key for quick mask, we can paint with black and white right here with this mask. And I'm painting with black and notice it shows that color. If you don't see that color well enough, double click and let's turn the opacity up much higher. Hit the Q key again and now you can see those areas that I missed. So it's very, very easy to see it that way. So the Q key for the quick mask toggles between a selection and a paintable selection, which is basically what it is. As you paint, when you're in quick mask, then you go back and it becomes an active selection. Now I'm gonna show you another trick with selections. What we wanna do though, because we've selected the white area, I wanna select everything else. So we're gonna choose select inverse. And you could, click Command Shift I, or that would be Control Shift I on Windows to inverse that selection. So now what we've done is we've selected our girl here. Now I don't want the rest of there in there, so I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool. And if you hold down the Alt key or the Option key, now it becomes a minus. And so we can just go over here and we can just select it over there. See what we're doing, we're just taking that away from our selection. So now our selection is just around our drummer here. All right, so what I'm gonna do though, I wanna tighten this up a little bit. I'm gonna choose to select and I'm gonna choose to modify. And I'm just gonna contract this just by two pixels. And the reason I'm doing that is it brings it a little tighter and then we're not gonna have that white edge. Now I wanna save the selection so we can use it later. So if we choose select and then we choose to save selection, we're gonna call this one drummer. And now we've actually literally saved the selection and we can turn it off and we can come back and we can use it whenever we want. Now this is a really useful technique because you can save multiple selections and just use them when you want to use them so you don't have to keep reselecting things. Okay, so let's use this right now. I'm just going to hit Control D to turn off that selection 
And now we're just going to show our mask again. So I'm going to hold the shift key. And there's our mask. Now we want to paint around inside our girl here. So let's click on the mask. And this is how it would work. You would just choose to select and then choose to load the selection. And then all your selections will be here under the channel. And remember the one we did? Drummer. We select that. Now we've got our selection. So let's grab our brush. And of course, we want to show the contents of this layer. So remember what that is. That's white because black is the black hole cuts it out. White shows it. So let's make it nice and big. And then we can just paint over here and look at this. And we can just paint her face back in. Now we can paint all of this in solid if we want, but I kind of like the way it blends in those areas. So I'm just going to hit Control D to turn off the selection. And see how we get a little harsh selection around the edge there. So there's another thing we can do to just kind of soften that is if we select here. And then what we want to do is we want to just go into the properties. And if you look under the properties, we've got some things we can do. And one of them is here is just to feather that mask. So we just slightly feather it. See that? That's before. And that's afterwards. We can just kind of create a soft edge around there. See, there we go. And then it just kind of makes that soft edge. So it's up to you how soft or how hard you want to work with it. And then essentially you can kind of do that just to blend things together. So anyway, they had some different things that you can do with the layers and blending those different layers using masks inside of Photoshop. I'm just really scraping the surface of the things that you can do. Don't forget to check out more tutorials that I have here at Photoshop Cafe. And in fact, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button right now if you don't mind. And in that way, you're not going to miss my new tutorials because I do a new tutorial at least once a week. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you did, smash that like button into dust. It really does help. In fact, when you hit the like in the comments, it really helps boost the video so other people can find it on YouTube. So having said that, please um, add a comment. Let me know what you thought. Did you enjoy this tutorial? Um, do you like this more comprehensive style of tutorial where I'm combining more than one technique together, which is what I was doing here? Or do you prefer it when I just stick to one technique at a time? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, any suggestions, drop them in there too. So thanks guys for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.